everyone and welcome back to another video on the channel uh, so happy to be here with you guys again today um, if you guys have been watching the videos enjoying don't forget to like subscribe leave a comment let me know what you like uh, about what topics you want me to cover today we're gonna actually do a balance assessment um, of how to use chat GPT and Manus and really compare them and see what their strengths are and how to incorporate them in our daily use right so um, this is not a sponsorship. I'm not paid by any of these companies. I'm creating that just based on my experience with these and as well as a lot of deep search that I've done using Grok3 Perplexity uh, to really go over comments from uh, clinicians, physicians, hospitalists, and uh, community uh, when used uh, in, in medicine. And really getting um, this is update up to date as of April 15 of uh, 2025. And so and let's go ahead and get started without further ado um so the why right so we have a you know ai tools are every day getting integrated new ai tools getting pitched to us about oh this is a new thing this is that but again which one is better how do we use them um the most important thing is for us to t save time and be able to integrate our data and have access to it as quick as possible so really need to i've i loved both of chat gpt and menace and over the last few months um so this this means a lot to me to kind of be able to compare them and see how i can integrate both in my future pr uh, practice as a hospital so currently i am a resident pgy3 here in texas and i do see a, a lot of patients but i'm i want to see once i'm seeing 25 30 patients um how much this can make a difference right so uh the disclaimer here is that you know all clinical tools should be used in conjunction uh with the physician judgment do not let these tools dictate uh how you practice right uh always check the local guidelines it's institutional policies and um always directly chart review your patients uh, because again this is an algorithm these are very small algorithms they could pull wrong data uh, they could lie to you ai is able to lie ai is able to make mistakes and you're dealing with uh, you know the highest kind of level of um, human interaction so you have to make sure that um, you supervise everything that it does right so and be able to know when he can make a mistake although I, we did create a video on chat gpt and how to personalize it and how to reduce uh, its mistakes and so there was a the 10 prompts that any um, clinician should have in their uh, gpt personalization the video is uh, uploaded i'll put a link to that if you want to watch go ahead and do that uh, but yeah so the disclaimer is important All right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is document analysis and capabilities, right? So um, let's say, for example, I mean, the best way really to do this is with an example. So um, let's say you want to do morning pre rounds and a review on your cases before you go see them, right? So a hospital is pasted overnight nursing and clinical notes into GPT, right? Manually pasting and ask for a summary. And it does a great job, honestly. ChatGPT identifies that you know there was hypotensive episodes, IV fluid were administered, and there was improved oxygenation, what have you. Separate lab review and interpretation also yield accurate insights, right? So you separately do the labs, you look at the labs, and then kind of see based on the notes that you pasted, it will give you a summary. Would I personally do this at this point? Probably not, not for pre-rounding because it's just too much work to have to go and paste, right? So you don't you use GPT for that stuff, but let's say you were to. And so you see, uh, this is how it works. But Manus, however, uh, you know, you, you can upload the notes, the labs, the everything, MARs into the Manus AI. The platform integrates all of the data and links that hypotension with the medication for you. And it can tell you that possible adverse effect, right? And um, it would flag that adverse medical event um, because it's able to access all of that data and integrate and analyze all of those at the same time and show you the trends. Uh, versus ChatGPT, if you were to do that, you would have to manually put everything in. It just would be too much you know, time spent on that. That's why we don't usually use GPT for pre-rounds at this time. But the balance assessment is that ChatGPT performs well with individually uploaded documents. Manus strength is basically in integrating across document types 
and especially if when you structure it everything is time stamped very good and it's right now best when you use it with um, epic or cerner because it's fully integrated so the next thing this is just a couple of graphs of how we talked about you know so if the somebody in chat gpt example you know you you put the overnight nursing notes it creates summary manas is able to integrate everything and tell you uh, what could have happened actually so the next one is longitudinal data analysis so uh, the example would be let's say um, you and and this happens a lot right so um, patients who come in for recurrent admissions they get keep getting admitted and admitted so chat gpt you know a hospitalist compiles all of the renal for example data across the admissions shares that table copy and pastes into there and gpt has to correctly identify an acute on chronic skin injury based on what you put in it's very dependent on which part what information you put in it right so uh, if you missed for example one of the admissions or didn't put in there ChatGPT won't know and may not correctly identify the aka and ckd situation Manus, uh because it's able to integrate into ehr it can actually pull all of the data so hysteric creatinine levels it generates for you even a trend graph that you can even show your patients and present it like that and it will suggest you know the rising severity of aki episodes right so um gpt is really good once you give it the data it's able to summarize it for you and get really and do a good job at that but again it's very dependent on what you copy and paste and how you copy and paste and if you able to time stamp everything so it can correlate uh, so balance assessment so chat gpt again is very flexible and that's why everybody has been trying to use it is uh, when data is structured manually manis automates that data retrieval which is one of the most time consuming uh things that's happening right now with all of us as uh, clinicians and prevents us from using ai is because that data retrieval can take a lot of time and then it can trend the generation and um again again performance is limited by the institutional ehr access we're going to talk about those as of april 15 of 2025 um, the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the clinical decision support right so let's say you wanted to um, treat uh, hcap right um, and you want to pick the antibiotic for this so a chat gpt example you know it it can provide you the idsa guidelines um you know the options it can even give you renal dosing it can tell you to adjust for allergies again it's based on what you input into it manis it uses that uh antibiogram that you have locally nationally and look at even the resistance for antibiotics the cultures the renal data for the patient the allergies and really put everything together and uh, so chat gpt again most of them you can see they can do a lot of things right but when you, it comes to integrating some national local data and then everything together manis is able to put everything together better um so the balance assessment is that you know chat gpt is pretty reliable for guideline based answers and we've all uh, used gpt uh, to check guidelines and all that manis ai has a local advantage but it's dependent on that full access uh, to the microbiology resistant data feeds uh, need for clinician oversight for both is still paramount okay let's go ahead and move on so if you are enjoying the video up to this point don't forget to give me a thumbs up like subscribe comment uh, if you think this is useful and if you want to see more of these kind of videos um, so the next is going to be differential diagnosis support and we've all tried to create differential diagnoses just to make sure we're most efficient and we don't miss anything it's not to uh, to you know uh, change our uh, you know decision making but it helps us broaden our differentials so ChatGPT, um, you know, produces a very comprehensive differential diagnosis based on the symptoms, on the context. It adapts well to the added medication history that you put in there. But again, it's very dependent on you actually going in there and putting the medications and everything, right? So um, Manis, it uses the vitals, the labs, the medications, the temporal patterns to prioritize the likely cause. Uh, so that's the advantage that it has. It can prioritize based on all of the trends everything integrated gpt right now you know let's say uh, uh 
anybody, a medical student can go on there and they're seeing a patient on the floor and they put some information, run some thoughts by it. You know, it's kind of like a clinical decision support. It will give you a very broad differential diagnosis. But I'll have to tell you that um, the ChatGPT can give this wide ranging diagnosis, right? Manus, it really is structured and gives you probability. So it still may miss some rare diagnosis if you don't really tell it or direct it that way, I would say. So that's kind of thing interesting to know that um, GPT, the deep dive into the differential diagnosis does a really good job versus a Manus that prioritizes and may actually try to um, screw you away from a uh, rarer diagnosis, which could actually be at play in that specific scenario. All right. Um, but results uh, when high quality, uh, you know, data is available are really good with Manus. Uh, that's no doubt. And overall balanced perspective, right? So, uh, what is the real balanced perspective here? So chat GPT, you know, it's accessible from anywhere. You don't need IT support, flexible, you know, transparent logic is pretty good. Conversational adaptability, knowledge is pretty good. Can access data, check for you, that will, uh, but does it really, really um, improve your workflow or uh, in terms of automation and not really, it really depends on you, how good you are with computers and how fast you can copy and paste and how you can integrate, put everything together. And uh, really, uh, it's a very good tool for, you know, clinical decision support. But in terms of workflow, Manus AI is very much so that. It is, um, you know, automated data pools, no generation, trends, visualizations, local, national, antibiograms, trending, uh, you know, the rec uh, recognition tailored to EHR documentation outputs, right? So you can see each has uh, their own uh, uses. And the best is if you are able to combine both of the tools um, for the best outcomes. Um, and the, and I think I have here that uh, the same kind of thing, use ChatGPT for flexible reasoning, narrative tasks, low data environments, use them as where available to automate and accelerate your data rich clinical workflows all right guys this is the end of our presentation if you enjoyed this presentation you think uh, it helped it's helpful to know all of these as updated and daily please go ahead and like subscribe leave me a comment uh, i would like to know your opinion on what the next topic should be if you want me to try any of these tools and uh, I'd be happy to try other tools and make compare and contrast. The goal of this channel is for us to really be able to both help with board studying, which all of us have to do. And um, as board, you know, uh, certified physicians in the future and uh, both help us to automate our workflow, integrate AI into our work um, so that we don't fall behind the curves. Right. So if you don't use AI and now this day and age, it's, it's really going to be tough and uh, on you. And uh, you, AI not only is good for you, but it's good for your patients, good for everybody in the hospital, helps with the hospital systems, reduces, can reduce a lot of, uh, you know, issues, mistakes, and prevent a lot of things, right? So um, again, as if it's used properly, but so this is our the goal of our channel. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Dr. Nasser, and I'll see you on the next one.